So I know that you are bound to come across a question like this in your homework, so let's talk about it. We're still going to be finding the distance and the midpoint, and the formulas are going to be the same, but now we've got radicals to worry about. So let's see how it's really not as bad as you think it is. First, let's talk about the distance. Again, the formula has not changed. It's going to be the change in x squared plus the change in y squared, now all inside of a square root. So the only trouble that we have may be in identifying what's the change in x. Well, if you kind of ignore these guys right here, think about it as though it's the ordered pairs 3, 7 and negative 1, 5. And you focus just on those coefficients. So what's the change from 3 to negative 1? Well, the change there is 4. But since they're connected to square roots of 2, it's going to be 4 times the square root of 2. Now, if you don't believe me on this, let's look at what the formula says, that but long expanded one, where you actually take the difference of these two guys. So if you do, <clears throat> excuse me, the difference of these two, you'd be doing 3 square roots of 2 minus negative square root of 2, right? Which gives us 3 square roots of 2, that becomes plus the square root of 2, and you find that that difference is 4 square roots of 2. So you can kind of ignore the radicals as long as they're the same, work on the difference of the coefficients, and then bring the radical part back into the problem. Same thing for the change in y. So what's the change in these two guys? Maybe kind of crazy, but look at this. What's the change from 7 to 5? The change is 2. So this is going to be 2 square roots of 3. So the difference in the coefficients is 2, and you bring along those coefficients, so it's 2 square roots of 3. Now we just have to work out this radical. Now this is not the most fun thing we've ever seen, but it is going to work out okay. When you square this, let's do it piece at a time. You square the 4 to get 16. You square the square root here to give you 2. So it's going to be 16 times 2 and then plus square the 2 to get 4, square the square root to get 3. So since this is a product, when you raise it to a power, you just raise each factor to that power. And now let's clean this up. 16 times 2 is 32. 4 times 2 is 12. Putting these guys together, we get 44 inside the square root. And we want to try to simplify this. And 44 is going to break down as the square root of 4 times the square root of 11. Say what that guy equals. The square root of 4 equals 2. Show it like that so that when it comes to your final simplified answer, you know that 2 is outside the radical and you still have the square root of 11. So this is your distance. The radicals add an extra layer of difficulty, but it's really not all that bad. Even when you you change gears and you start talking about the midpoint, okay? So the midpoint is still the average of the x coordinates and then the average of the y coordinates. All right, so let's see. If I take the average of the x's, so I'm going to take 3 square roots of 2 minus the square root of 2, because I'm just taking these guys exactly as I see them to combine them, divide by 2, and then for the y's, I have 7 square roots of 3 plus 5 square roots of 3 all divided by 2. And we'll just work this out. So this is 3 minus, this is understood to be a 1. So we get 2 square roots of 2 divided by 2. And over here we have 12 square roots of 3 divided by 2. Finish by simplifying 
we end up with the square root of 2 because 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 12 divided by 2 is 6 we get 6 times the square root of 3. So yeah the radicals made things a little bit more interesting but it's really not like over here finding the midpoint that was no big challenge. The big problem was finding the distance and so you find the difference between their coefficients so the difference between 3 and negative 1 is 4. The difference between 7 and 5 is 2. And then you brought along their corresponding radical pieces and you work it out. So try that problem in the homework.